OK, let's now hear from the Labor camp and one of the incoming ministers who will form part of Anthony Albanese's cabinet. Linda Burney, thanks for joining us and congratulations. Thank you, David, and good evening. Now, this is an historic election outcome for a number of reasons, including the number of Indigenous members of the Labor caucus uh, as of these results. What does this mean for Indigenous Australians? Well, pro providing we win the seat of Lingiari, which is looking very positive, there will be six First Nations people in the Labor Party caucus, um, three in the Senate and three in the House of Representatives, including uh, a medical doctor, Gordon Reid, from, uh, from the seat of Robertson. It is historic. If you'd said to me, David, five years ago, we're going to have six people um, in the 2022 election, I would not have believed it was possible. What it will mean for the Labor caucus is it will assist enormously in the task that we've got ahead, particularly the implementation in full of the Uluru Statement. Well, I want to ask you about that in a moment, but as someone who's about to become the Indigenous Affairs Minister, of course, you'll be replacing Ken Wyatt, who's lost his seat uh, as well as lo losing government. Do you have any sympathy for Ken Wyatt? Are you sorry to see him leave the parliament altogether? Ken Wyatt sent me the most gracious message this morning, which I really appreciated, and I assured him in my response that the work that he has done towards uh, constitutional recognition and the work that he has done in his portfolio will not be a waste. It would be wrong for me as the incoming uh, Indigenous Affairs Minister to jettison all the work that's been done over the last few years. So I wish Ken well. I know him well. And as I said, he, he sent a very gracious message to me this morning. So what are the next steps when it comes to enshrining in the Constitution an Indigenous voice to Parliament? We heard Anthony Albanese in his victory speech last night really emphasise the importance of this. What happens now from here? Well, what's really wonderful, David, is that the Shadow Cabinet and the caucus is of at one in terms of the implementation of the Uluru Statement. Just very briefly, remember, that's a constitutionally enshrined voice in the Australian Constitution, which requires a referendum. Uh, we will start the beginning of a treaty and agreement-making process, complex and will take a long time. But I have a very firm view in my mind of how we should do that. And finally, a national process of truth-telling. This will be something that will change our nation. This will be something that will spark the imagination of everyone. And the support already in the community, in the corporate sector and in the non-government sector for an enshrined voice in the parliament is just enormous. The next steps are these. Have a look at the work that's already been done. Uh, make sure you consult and talk to the original people that put the Uluru Statement together. I've already started that process. And make sure that you consult widely on what the question should be, what the timing should be. And of course, there is a legislative process that we have to go through as well. Labor has a First Nations caucus and that includes the now Attorney General of Australia, it includes me and it includes many other people in the Labor caucus. So we will be using that uh, part of our mechanism to make sure that we are driving forward. And of course, most importantly, uh, talking to the Shadow Cabinet, talking to the leader and making sure that we move forward together in terms of this nation building pr process. 
And Linda Burney, let me ask you just finally, this election result is also going to see more women entering Parliament, and it's women in particular who appear to have been the ones really driving the Morrison government out of power. How will the incoming Labor government respond to the, the loud voice we've heard from women at this election? Well, I was just watching your coverage this afternoon of last night, and I think Tanya Plebisek said it very well. Labor's agenda in terms of women um, is very much about pay equity. It's very much about making sure that women, uh, sectors that are dominated by women in the workforce uh, are paid properly. It's about childcare. But it's also really importantly, David, about implementing 55 recommendations of the Jenkins Review and making sure that we think carefully and work uh, stridently on the culture of the workplace at Parliament House. But it's also about addressing issues of family and uh, domestic violence and in particular the effects it has on family and children. Linda Burney, appreciate your time. Thank you.